How about this is a door? This is a door. This is a door. Well, it could be a door. Yeah, I think it'll be tighter and not let the rodents in, but these are the windows that Crombie gave us. Repurposing free stuff, I like it. That's right, it's free. I mean, we're recycling. We're recycling, being good to the environment. So like, oak frame, because we still got some oak left over with a, like a wide base, and then something in the middle does a brace. And it's still going to be that, yeah, it won't be that insulated for sure, but it's probably going to be better than the glass one we have now. And it'll seal tight. Or... I think something needs to live there. Whether it's our name, or some catchphrase, or some pretty picture of a river, or something. Okay, so I think that idea. needs to be a little wide. <laughs> we need someone with talent. We need artistic friends. <laughs> Kristen! Okay. Beth! A George will be. Kind of the general layout of the door, I think. Um, this will be the bottom, and then we're going to have a little panel in there, and then set the windows in like that, and then the door handle will be in here somewhere. And uh, yeah, that's it. So we're going to glue up the panels. Somehow, with this, I think we'll just make some oak panels like this, and uh, I think I'll glue and then glue a bunch of short pieces. And then I'm going to have to sort of drop this in there and draw out the outline and cut out a round, an oval piece, essentially. Um, I don't want to glue up an entire panel and cut out the waste of wood, so I think I'll just sort of glue together, like I said, glue the short pieces there. So I'll have, I think I'm going to glue these up next, and then draw the edges, and then I have to mill the tongue and groove on the end of those pieces. That'll be the process. So here's our door laid out. Uh, these are the panels to hold the windows in. And so I guess the next step is I'm going to cut each one of these to the exact length and then I can cut the tenons on them. Um, yeah, and then I guess that's it. So normally I would use my router table to cut the mortise and tenons, sort of basically it's a big cabinet door really, is this is door. Um, but I'm using inch and a half stock or stuff I milled down inch and a half. And I don't have uh, big enough router bits to do that. So I'm going to use my table saw and I've got this tenon cutting jig that I'm going to do instead. So uh, I use my square here, my speed square to set my depth for an inch and five sixteenths. And then I cut a test piece, and I got that uh, tenon about oh, just a little under a half an inch, I guess. Um, I, I don't, just sort of random. I figured I'd get it somewhere between three eighths and a half. And when I set it up, it was seven sixteenths. And I'm going to cut the groove with a dado blade that I can set pretty precisely anyway. And, and so um, I should be able to get that groove just right. And so I should be all set to go. So I'm going to be cut these tenons. The other thing I did is I went through and I labeled each side. Now, 
this is imperfect wood since it, well, it was free to begin with, and then I kind of had to mill it up. And so I decided to put anything, any sort of flaws in the wood, which I, I look pretty cool, um, but I don't want moisture to get into them. So I, uh, I marked those to go in the inside, and uh, the sort of, the more rugged, the more sealed up what I'm going to put the outside. So I label all those with an O, just so I can always keep them straight when I'm, when I'm processing them, you know, just to make sure that everything fits back together when we get ready to go. So let's cut some tenons. Now set the height of my blade just as high as that cut. So I cut a line, I uh, drew a line right here on the right near the tenon so that I can match up that line with my, with my uh, table saw blade and cut the shoulders off this. And I clamped this stock block into place after I lined up my, I mean, this is just a scrap piece test, but that way I lined, I lined up the Line up my line here with my blade, put it in place, put a stop block on there, and I'm going to cut the cheeks on this to see if it is correct. Alright, looks pretty good, nice and clean. That's my test set. Smaller panels, I usually like to run them through the planer if I can after just to smooth them up. But um, these ones are too wide, so I'm gonna use a belt sander just because it's a lot faster. And then when I actually mill the edges to get into the uh, basically make tenons on these edges, and you get better results if they're as flat as possible. So I set my depth at a half an inch which it will be for the panels, and then I'm gonna use probably a router to dig it out later with my, to, for the other rails. And then looking right straight over the top, I lined up, I lined up the saw blade with that tenon. Okay, time to run our window panels through the dado blade to get our basically tenon here that's going to fit into the mortise of the sides of the door. And this is uh, called the feather board, and it will kind of keep this push down uh, flat against the table to keep it um, as consistent, you know, thickness as possible as we go through. There's going to be little variations, and just kind of helps keep it in place, in theory, anyway. I had contemplating keeping the mortises for the frame pieces at a half an inch just to make it easier, but um, as this being sort of an exterior door and ultimately oak, so fairly heavy, I thought that maybe I should make those mortises a little bit longer. And my, I have a really cool mortising jig um, that I built, but I can't, you know, with this I need to get down, you know, a good, you know, almost two inches. And I, I don't have a router bit that that deep, so I'm gonna have to. I set up a basically kind of a little jig here with my drill press, and I'll pre-drill a lot of the material out, and then I'll have to go back with a chisel and uh, hog out the rest of that material, which is 
slow and tedious, but I guess that's the way I have to do it. So now we get to the moment of truth that is always terrifying because you're not really sure if it's everything's going to fit. So we'll see how it goes. Keep your fingers crossed and all that stuff. Well, here it is. Uh, I went together okay. I got a little bit of gap right there. Everything else sealed up pretty good. I'm, I'm not sure what hung that up there. Could be just that the board's a little bit warped, but. It's, it's pretty square, so uh, it'll let the glue dry, and then I'll take the belt sander to it, and we'll begin the sanding and the finishing process. So um, I did these panels, I did, they came apart, they broke a couple times, putting them in, so in retrospect, probably a piece of plywood would have been better than gluing up those panels. I think, I don't know, I'm going to have to, hopefully with the window set in, and that, you know, the the gaskets and the screws all around it. Um, hopefully that'll sort of firm it up a little bit. Um, and then again, I put, well, I'm trying to debate. I don't know exactly sure how I'm going to put a finish on yet. I got some spar varnish. Part of me is thinking I should epoxy it. I don't know, I'll have to do some more, more sposing on that before I get there, but. It looks cool, I think. All right, so here we are, the glue dried overnight and I'm gonna take a belt sander and 80 grit and uh, kind of smooth everything out, get the, the rest of the glue off, and then we'll kind of work down grits down to, probably get down to 220. All right, so I got it sanded down with uh, 80 grit. Um, this side actually has some more gaps, and I don't know, I'm guessing probably what happened is these longer pieces hard to get super flat with my small joiner and so you know one side of it is compressed in the other side is sort of tilted out a little bit so I'm going to fill these in with some um, sawdust and some glue mixed up I pulled some sawdust out of the bag of the of the belt sander and I'll mix this up and sort of fill in the gaps and then sort of cut out to go down to 120 grit and re-sand it again um, it's still pretty square uh, not as yeah, it's like a, an eighth off, so I wish it was a little bit square, but uh, <laughs> I guess that's kind of working with uh, working with rust on wood, I guess. Uh, I switched to 120 grit on the belt sander and for this phase I like sanding it down um, while the my glue mixture here is still wet because I find that the, the sawdust actually kind of works in uh, into the glue as well and sort of helps feel that um, seal in that gap so Okay, use my orbital sander with uh, some 120 grit and uh, got all the scratches from the belt sander out. And um, now it's kind of a, one of my finishing tips I like to do is I take wet rags and wipe everything down. And then if I see any disc weird discolorations, I know that there's still glue there. And, uh, and that will sort of make the finish look weird. So it helps me identify any glue and I miss. The other thing it does is it raises the grain and the little fibers sort of stand up and they kind of only do that once when they're sort of wet and it can happen if you put finish on it sort of it makes the finish sort of a little, little bit rougher and you have to sand it down again but you can actually raise the grain now and then sand it with some 220 and then that grain won't raise anymore and it'll keep a nice solid nice 
fine finish. I guess it's time to stain. I'm going to use a uh, spar urethane for the outdoor characteristics of it. And we'll see how it looks. So we got one coat of this spar varnish on and I'm really liking the way it looks. I, I love this sort of natural distressed wood, I suppose, look that we've gotten from, uh, again, just, just free. It's still from that, still from that pile that, uh, again, if you saw the video we did the countertop, we're still sort of pulling stock out of that pile, so it's incredible. Um, again, it's not perfect. There's certainly some blemishes in it, but uh, again, tough to get this wood real square and... Uh, Plus, I'm not a professional, I don't do this every day, but I'm really happy the way it looks. So still got to build the door jams and put another coats on it, but I think uh, I'm going to end this video for now, and then the next video, um, again, I think sometimes it's easier to build the jams right around the door and then install the whole thing sort of pre-hung, so I think I'm going to go that route. Um, but again, pretty psyched the way it came out so far. Again, I'll do some close-up shots of some of the, um, the features, I guess, of the texture of it so you can kind of see it up close. And uh, yeah, we'll keep going from here. And again, I'll drop the, the windows in, you know, get some more coats in, drop the windows in, uh, build the jams, and, and do the install, I guess, in the next video. So um, certainly appreciate you joining in for the ride. Thanks a lot. Appreciate the support. Like, subscribe, do all those things that you do. And uh, again, look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.